Let's go ahead and draw a stem plot from a quantitative distribution. Here is a bunch of average grades for a semester. So let's imagine we collected data from a bunch of students and these are the different grades they had for their semester. Whenever you have a relatively short list, uh, let's say maybe 25 numbers or less, it's not a hard and fast rule, but generally will work. Uh, and you have lots of different values that are possible. So here it looks like we have values ranging from as low as 63 to as high as 95. Pretty decent sized range. So small list, decent sized range, that's a great place to create a stem plot. Stem plots, sometimes called stem and leaf plots, break numbers into two parts. You have the stem on the left, the bigger uh, digit, uh, so in this number 89, the stem would be the 8. And then you have the leaf. The leaf is the smaller uh, number, the ones place in this case, uh, so the 9. And that would be plotted on the right. What you do with each of the numbers in your list is you write it in your stem plot. So on the left, you already number from your lowest to highest. You have the 60s all the way up to the 90s. On the right, each number written corresponds to a single number in your list. So, for example, lowest number we have, 63. So, cross that out, and we'll put 6 on this side, 3 on this side. Next one we have in the 70s, we have a 72 and a 79. So, in the 70s row, I'm going to put a 2 and a 9. And they're each going to be separate. I'm not going to write the 70 multiple times. I'm just going to put the 2 and the 9. For the 80s, I have an 87, 88, and 82. Put those on there. And then for the 90s, I have a 91 and a 95. And I would put those two numbers on there. And what this does is it gives me a general sense of the shape of the distribution. I can see that I kind of have a peak in the 80s. I have a few above and a few below reasonably symmetrical list of numbers and that's something that'll be really useful when you're doing certain statistical tests later on and you want to check that the that the graph is reasonably symmetrical always leave a key you'll notice down here I created a key uh, always leave a key with your stem and leaf plots uh, it helps you interpret what the number actually means 6 bar 3 intuitively would make sense as 63 but sometimes it might correspond to 630 or 6.3 or something else like that uh, depending on how you set up your graph. So just always create a key. One other thing that can happen with stem and leaf plots depending on how your distribution falls uh, is you might end up with a list where it's all bunched up like this into only three, uh, three stems with a whole bunch of leaves. If that happens and you want to get a more detailed view of what's going under underneath, you can create something called a split stem plot. And all that means is you take your 70s and you break it into two different parts. Instead of 70 through 79 all in one big row, you do 70 to 74 and then 75 to 79. Same thing with the 80s. Instead of 80 all the way up to 89 in one big row, you break it up. 80 to 84, 85 to 89. And so if we go through our numbers up here, this is a slightly different list than we had on the last page. Our lowest number is 70. So 7, 0. And we're going to put 70 in the first row of 70s. Next number is a 79. Now 79 is going to fall, because it's in the upper part of the 70s, on this next list. And all this does is just give us a different way to break up the numbers. We can keep going. And what it shows us, whereas here it looks like it's fairly symmetrical around the 80s, we can see that actually we have a lot of our data in the high 80s and in the 90s, and we have very little in the low 80s and 70s. So as this graph looked like it was pretty much symmetrical, here we can actually see a lot more of a skew. And so whenever your data gets too bunched up in a stem plot, splitting the stem can give you a little bit more information.